welcome back, I'm Adam Thomas. As you saw from the little intro, we've hit 5,000 subscribers, so thank you all so much for subscribing. If you're not already subscribed, make sure to click the subscription button, click the bell icon to get notified of all my latest videos. Uh, today, we're gonna be looking at another time lapse. We're gonna look at a big chess piece that I did. Um, I'm gonna go from start to finish, exactly what needles I use, what inks, the process that I go through, the reasons behind where I start and where I finish and how I approach the tattoo. Hopefully this will give you guys a bit of an insight into what I do. Hopefully help you guys out uh, with your tattoos. Um, and with all that being said, let's jump straight into it. So this was a big old chess piece, uh, big angel. I wanted to really oversize the piece, um, get it looking, um, get it looking really nice and big. We're gonna do something similar on the other side uh, and then some sort of stairway cloudy things in the middle, um, which I didn't think we'd have time to do, but uh, it sat so well, we absolutely flew through it. Uh, so we did manage to get a little bit on, which will be at the end of the video. So the first thing that I've started doing is blocking out my black. So if you watch any of my previous time lapses, you'll know that I tend to look to find a black point. So any part of my tattoo that's solid black to start with. So what that allows me to do is pack in that solid black, which gives me the darkest point of the tattoo. Everything after that should be a light, slightly lighter tone. Um, so nothing should be as dark as that point. So it just helps to keep all your values nice and solid uh, and gives you the, the, uh, the best result you can possibly get out of the tattoo. Uh, so I'm starting down by the armpit. A couple of reasons. One, me being right-handed, I don't want to be working anywhere else. I want to be start, starting from the bottom left and moving my way up uh, to try not to sort of rub off or destroy any of my stencil. We're also working into an existing piece we did on the shoulder. Uh, and also down by the armpits, a little bit more sensitive. So for me, if I can get those slightly more sensitive bits out of the way early on, while my client's still feeling pretty good, uh, everything else should be a, be a breeze. Uh, so the needles that I'm using at the moment, uh, I'm using, this is a nine round liner from Quadrant. Uh, the mag at the start would be 15 curve mag from Da Vinci. Um, and I've probably got a 27 curve mag and a three round liner. Um, I'm also using for this piece. Uh, so here I'm just sharpening on a few little uh, little clouds, uh, which is just gonna drop into the piece that we did exist on the shoulder. Um, start trying to blend all that together, get all this out of the way, and then I can really sort of crack on with the uh, with the big angel statue. Uh, so this is a big 27 mag, just blocking out these areas. Uh, gray wash wise, uh, these are Empire inks. Um, I use their gray wash set, so the ivory black, dark medium and light wash. Uh, I tend to have a pot of distilled water just to get those other slightly lighter tones so I can knock back some of the inks. Uh, and then white from Empire as well. Um, so at the moment, this is going to be uh, a lot of dark wash, just uh, feathered in just to make sure that everything heals up nice and solid. Um, and then just working through my tones just to get everything nice and smooth. Uh, so again, big 27 curve mag just to block out these big areas at the bottom. Um, keep everything nice and nice and smooth, nice and solid, but also keeping that nice crisp edge. So for me, the big bonus of working with the mags is you can use the, the length of the mag to carve out some big straight lines. Um, it's also going to keep everything nice and crisp, so you can cut into those tight areas. At the same time, using the mag flat, you can get those big smooth tones, uh, which is what we're looking to to achieve on the clothes down at the bottom. So these wings on the statue reference, they were pretty light. Um, so yeah, there wasn't a lot of work involved in that. The main bulk of it is obviously in the shadow section on the clothes. Um, so for me, I think that's why we managed to jump ahead so fast, a lot faster than I thought, just because there's not a massive amount of work in those wings. There can be a lot of skin breaks, uh, just to keep that a nice contrast as high as we possibly, possibly can keep it. So just working my way into a bit of background. So there's a lot of highlight on the face, which works well, because we want to get that big sun sort of spot in the middle of the chest. Uh, so I'm just blasting out a bit of background. That's gonna turn into clouds once we get into that bit of background in the middle. Uh, but I just wanted to carve out the edge of the face. I don't wanna get much line work in there. Um, there are scratch lines which are gonna hold the edges, keep it sort of uh, looking nice and crisp over the years, but I don't wanna put any big solid lines in because it's just gonna ruin the look of the realism. Um, and yeah, we, we want it to look as realistic as possible. So again, just carving out the fingers. I've dropped down the mag now. I'm using a 15 curve mag just to get into the uh, in between the fingers. Just working on the blacks first of all, just to make sure I've got that real nice contrast in there. And now I'm sort of feathering that out, probably a medium wash, uh, just to push that through, get it nice and smooth, give us that nice curvature of the fingers. Uh, don't want anything looking flat. Uh, just focusing on where the shadows are. 
Store the clothes at the bottom. I'd sort of roughed in the idea of where the creases are. So now I'm just splashing over that with a medium wash. Um, so it would have been dark and blacks before that. Uh, the medium wash just going to give us that nice curve. But again, we want to be focused on leaving plenty of skin gaps just to make sure we've got those nice sort of uh, high contrast values in there. Uh, and we're not just dominating the piece of black and grey uh, and really sort of muddying up and making it look a bit of a mess. So just giving a bit of a wash down before we get into the, the, uh, the complicated detail bits of the hair. So now I'm going back in with a uh, seven round liner uh, just to carve out the curves in the hair. So the great thing about doing statues, which is one of the reasons why I love doing them so much, is the fact that because they are statues and obviously chiseled, chiseled out of stone or marble, uh, whenever they're lit, you're gonna find that you're gonna get a real high contrast in the reference image. So you're gonna get either a big highlight or a big shadow. Makes your life so much easier doing the tattoo. Uh, you just gotta carve out those big, uh, the big shadows with some blacks and then just mag away from that with a lighter wash just to uh, just give you that curvature. Uh, make sure you're really paying attention to where the light source is, keeping everything going in the same direction. So we're just working through the hair. So you can see how I blocked out the, uh, the bits of the shadows in the hair and then I've just run over it with a slightly bigger mag just to sort of carve out and get that curvature of the hair but retain it all the nice, uh, all the nice sort of uh, blocked out sections uh, of the hair. Just skip forward a little bit. So at this point, we've probably been going for three or four hours uh, ish. Like I say, we were going through it fairly fast. Uh, so all I've got to do now is the face really. So uh, the way I tend to attack these faces is I'll carve out the eyes, nose and mouth just so I don't lose them uh, with stencil. Uh, so I'll use my liner for that just to carve out some of the details and then I'll go back in with a mag. So this is a 15 curve mag uh, and then medium wash, probably blend it out with a bit of light uh, and then back in with darks just to really bump up those shadows. Um, so again, 15 curve mag, I'm using it on the edge now just to carve out these little bits of the hair. Uh, so again, the great thing with the mags, you can use them on the side in essence, you've got a two liner, uh, you use them flat, and then you've got the full, full sort of weight of the mag. Uh, just keeping them nice and clean, giving it a big wash down. Now I've pretty much got rid of all my stencil at this point, so I don't need to worry about retaining anything. So I can wash it down as much as I want, keep it nice and clean, make sure I'm not confusing myself with any bits of ink that are on the skin, bits that aren't tattooed, so I'm not trying to smooth out anything that isn't there. Uh, so just extending this background out a little bit more, so a big 27 mag, light wash, just blasting over everything, just bumping up those shadows, making sure the values are there. So by washing over the face with a light wash, with a 27, with a 15, just really hitting all of that skin, it's gonna allow me to put those skin breaks in on the front, uh, which is gonna give us that real bright shine on the face to make sure we've got that that nice sort of sunlight hitting the front of the, uh, the statue. So just banging a few extra little details into the, the, uh, the wings of the statue. Uh, they looked a little bit sort of blank, so I thought I'd just add a few little bits in there. They weren't, it wasn't strictly on the reference, but it looked a little bit unfinished, so I just added a few little, uh, few little extra bits, artistic license there, just to make sure that it looks right as the tattoo, uh, and just taking a few little liberties with the, uh, with this stencil. So that was pretty much the angel done. Uh, we had a little bit of a break, I managed to get the stencil on for the centerpiece, which is also gonna merge into the other side. Uh, so I'm gonna carve all of this into the angel, but on the other side, I'm gonna keep it a little bit more rough. So once we get the other side in, we can then just knock that back, get the clouds and the rays in. Um, and make it all into one big chest piece. Uh, like I say, it's gonna be a similar sort of angel on the other side, a similar sort of statue. Um, same sort of size and same sort of pose, but obviously slightly different. Uh, so we're not just doing a mirror image of the same statue. Um, so the way I tend to do uh, sort of rays and clouds, uh, I'll block out, as you can see now, uh, individual strands of the rays. The, the hardest thing that you have around doing sun rays is that anything you're tattooing is technically negative. So you're trying to keep the skin breaks to create the light, um, as opposed to tattooing the light, obviously. But you can get a little bit confused when you're tattooing it, uh, and once you've got a pink everywhere, it's going to sometimes be a little bit tricky tricky to see, but you're just trying to get that nice big glow uh, and that, those big, strong sun rays. Uh, so my stencils for clouds are pretty, pretty simple. Uh, it's basically just a wiggly line, and then I work 
off the top of the line. Um, so if I've got a line sort of drawn, I'll be tattooing it off and up, creating some texture, but then leaving a gap between the line above it, which will give you the highlight to the top of the cloud, jumping up, hitting that line, and then so on and so forth, moving forward. Um, until you get rid of your stencil, it's gonna look a little bit weird, so you've gotta bear with it. Um, as soon as the stencil goes, it will look like a nice fluffy cloud. What you don't wanna do is overwork it and find high dose stencil lines, because um, what you're gonna end up with is a very, very harsh line on the top of the cloud, and it's not gonna look nice and soft and fluffy like you'd expect clouds to look like. Um, so here, move on to the next bit. Uh, don't worry too much um, individually, cloud-wise. Uh, the overall look will uh, give you some nice little clouded, clouded looks. Um, so again, blast it with a load of 27, uh, 27 kind of mag just to get all that sky in, just to give it a bit more impact, just darken it up a little bit, uh, making sure that we've really got those stairs sort of hammered out in the clouds, but making sure the rays are still coming over the top of it. Um, like I say, I line all of the um, all of the rays uh, with regards to the stencil. I don't line it in the tattoo. I just make sure I'm aware of where the gaps are in the skin gaps. Um, and just make sure that I'm running those through. It's not massively important that you run the whole way through the clouds, it's just an indication more than anything. Uh, it's just to get that, that look and that feel of the uh, of the sun rays more than anything. So you are, again, putting a lot of artistic license into these sort of tattoos, because, um, you know, sun rays and clouds and you know, definitely get stairs in the clouds. So, uh, yeah, you're just trying to make it look like the, uh, yeah, the finisher at aiming for. So now we're into white highlights. Uh, sure it was getting pretty sore by this point so uh, yeah I wasn't going too wild uh, you can see how much of it I've left on the uh, on the other side of the chest so we haven't done hardly any clouds on there like I said I don't know how big the other range is going to be so uh, I just wanted to get just enough of the middle bit in and then we can add the rest in uh, so I've dropped a few white highlights on the top of the clouds which is just again why I've left that skin gap just to bump up that a little bit more uh, and now we're just going through the angel uh, go through the statue and just hitting all of those uh, top edges that are just catching the light that are really sort of blown out by the light uh, just to really make everything look nice and crisp, uh, super bright, super contrasting. Uh, not using white to save any pieces or pull any, any sort of sections out. You, uh, you technically should get, be able to get to the end of the tattoo and not need to put white in. White should just add to the tattoo and you definitely not save it. Um, so yeah, we're just hitting the edges, making sure it's all nice and crisp. Uh, and just getting those whites really, really pounded in there. It is the worst part of the day uh, for your client. So there's plenty of backing going on there just to uh, help make it a little bit easier. But it's definitely worth making sure those white highlights are in, like properly and solid. You can see I'm going back over some in the clouds, which yeah, I'm sure you really thank me for. Um, but it just gives you that real nice bright finish to it. Uh, and it just gives you that real crisp look. So just banging a load of inkies, get it nice and zelled, uh, then we start getting some photos. Um, I think at this point I've decided the, uh, the, the, uh, the glow in the clouds where the sun's coming through just needs to be a little bit brighter, so I'm actually magging some white in there now. Uh, so this will be my 15 curve mag, uh, and just really making sure that's a real bright glow when it feels, so it looks like you've got the sun breaking through the clouds. Um, And whilst I'm there with the 15, I think I'm just hitting some of those edges just to soften those lines a little bit. Sometimes you can put lines in and they just end up going a little bit too crisp and a little bit too harsh. So just run a mag through it uh, and just soften those lines down. It's just going to give you a, a nice effect when it heals. Because obviously at the moment everything's really nice and red, but once that settles down, that white's going to be brighter than the skin tone. So it's going to give you that, that nice extra bit, of, uh, extra bit of contrast, extra bit of definition. Uh, and those little details, they really make sort of uh, an average tattoo just looks so much nicer. Um, so again, 15 curve mag, just blasting a load of white all through these big highlights that are getting hit by the light source, um, just to really bump that contrast up. Uh, and I think that was pretty much us done. So then the finished piece looks like that. So yeah, like I say, we managed to do a lot more than what I thought we were gonna do. Uh, I, in my head, Thought we were just going to be getting the angel in, uh, but yeah, we ended up getting all of that center piece in as well. Uh, you can sort of see the white highlights in there, how they're sort of picking out the edges, keeping us nice and bright. Uh, but we've also got a nice smooth black and grey, um, which has just got everything nice and soft, especially in the clouds. It's going to be nice once we get the other side on, get everything a bit more balanced. Uh, but yeah, from where we started with the nice solid blacks, you can see how dark 
kind of the dark black sit down by the armpit and they smooth round, uh, but keeping everything nice and solid value wise. Uh, it's a really fun piece to tattoo. Uh, like I said, I really enjoy doing the statues. Uh, you just get that real nice sort of contrast and everything's really nice and crisp and solid. Uh, and yeah, it's gonna be great to get the other side on. So there you go guys, that was another time lapse. Hope you enjoyed that one. Um, got plenty more in the pipeline, I've filmed below. Um, so yeah, stay tuned on Tuesdays for my time lapses. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure to click the subscription button. Make sure to like the video, click the bell icon to get notified of all my latest videos. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, it's been a really fun one to tattoo. Uh, keep your eyes out later in the week. We've got some, some big giveaways coming up. So uh, yeah, it should be fun. Well, again, thank you all. See you on the next video. Peace. Start it up.